If you like to do inspirational or fun video quotes for social media, then you won't want to miss this tutorial video. Not only are you going to see how to make this cool video quote, but you'll also learn the techniques I use to reverse engineer a design and recreate it right here inside Camtasia. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. For the example in this video, I got my inspiration from Canva where they have many animation options to choose from inside the tool. In today's example, we're going to look at the scrapbook animation. As you can see, there are many elements and they all come onto the canvas in a haphazard animated way. But when the animation stops, all the elements are nicely in place. Now, let's quickly walk through the series of steps I go through to reverse engineer this creation and produce the finished result in Camtasia. Step number one is to analyze the design elements. And what we have here in this first little spot on uh, at the start of our timeline is the actual video that I took as my download from Canva. You can see it has all the nice actions and movements. So let's quickly go through this video frame by frame using the period key to go forward a frame or the or the comma key to go back. This is in Windows. And um, we can just see how the elements come onto the screen in, in isolation and sort of look at all of those elements that we need to create and when the timing of them when they come on and their shape and size, etc. So let's just start here. So I'm pressing the period key and we can see we got a nice colored background to start. And then all of a sudden we start to see this is going to be the square coming in. So the square starts, it appears first here now, then I keep pressing, then all of a sudden we have the text come in. Now you can see there's three different elements we're, we're dealing with. I keep pressing and a few more frames and up comes. Oh, nothing didn't come up, but the white square moved. So this is part of the animation of the square in the sort of scrapbook um, effect. Then I'm going to press again. And then now we see a line came into play and then keep pressing again. Oh, now look at the top. We saw a quote of the day come on as well as the text went down. So if I go back a frame, see two things happen there. The title quote of the day came on and the text shifted. So those are both animations. And then I clicked once more the the um, period key and the picture came into play now. A few more frames. I'm still pressing the key. Ah, the white square moved in to its position, its final resting position. Then a few more clicks. We now saw a quote of the day in the text to settle in its final resting position. And a few more clicks. The line, it goes into place. And then a few more clicks, the picture. And then a few more clicks. There we are, the author text. So now we have the completed design. And as you can see, the way it executed, you know, we just broke it down into a frame by frame view. and it nicely falls into place. Now I'm going to show you here's our finished result here and you can see here if I just sort of move things up a bit we have things with different starting points as well as uh, a bunch of the custom animations and they're all very short and quick because that's that's how they are and um, let's just see how that plays out. So you have all those elements there and there you go. It looks the same just a whole different quote. This quote I did here is from uh, the author Nir Eyal. He wrote a book called Indistractable, which is very helpful for those of you that get easily distracted and go into things like social media and can't focus on what you're doing. So I, I chose this quote and liked it, you know. But like the parents who blame a sugar high for their kids' bad behavior, blaming devices is a surface level answer to a deep question. Well, that's the truth, at least for me. So now what I wanted to do is show you how we can take, um, you know, get, get this structure here by like a reverse engineering process. It's all nice to look at the finished product. And what I decided to do is because as you can see, each one of these elements has slightly different timing in the animations as to where they are. So I thought a nice simple way to do it would be to let's just um, copy the original little video clip I downloaded from Canva, which I have here now and we can make the concept of a, of a template. So let's go and start at the beginning and we'll just start with one, with one of them. And I'll use the first thing that appears, which is the, 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 uh, the white square shape. So we go frame by frame and then 
all of a sudden there it is okay so it appears on this frame now I use the feature the markers feature so if we just click here and set a marker and I'm gonna call it s1 for for square first um, marker position and then I'm gonna come back to the object and then keep going and then I'm only looking now though for when the square moves again because we're trying to find the entry points the animation points and and you know where it finally rests so as you can see oh there it just shifted up so I want another position here and then I click it and I'm gonna call this one s2 and then I'm gonna keep going click back on context here as we go through the little video and where the next movement is in the white square we're gonna oh there we go so its final resting point is here and we're just gonna label that as like our third position so what you can see is I've in essence used created a little template just focusing in on, on the white square shape and what animation moves happen there so if you use what's called the control and right square bracket you can move from marker to marker so I'm gonna show you now I just move the playhead to the, the front and I'm gonna go press the control uh, right square bracket here's the first entry point where the square came in then I'll press it again to go to the next marker that's where it moved up and then the final position is where it rested so what I want to want it what I did to to make this easier for you to look at from the perspective of cloning I just made a bunch of these little tiny templates with the positions where the movements of each type occurred so I'm gonna clear this out because I have a copy of it just to the side here and let's move along the timeline to see sort of how those templates all look so I'm just gonna bring whoops bring them in into perspective okay so there's the first one so if we're using my control shift like I said that's the white square all the positions then we're gonna move along the timeline and now we're gonna look at the next next couple so this one I called the positions t1 t2 t3 because it's the text so now if you watch I press control and right square bracket to go to the next marker there's where the text first came in then where the text shifted again and then it finally rested so these nice three positions on here as you can see the playheads on the third one represent the start position then what happened next and then the final resting in step two let's create our assets or elements for use so again I'm going to use our trusty little original recording and I want it to go to the point where you know, the playhead where everything's been built and now as you can see here on the side here I've, I've got all of those layers already created with all our elements but I'm just going to show you how I created the first few and then you can see how the, you'll get the idea how the rest unfolds so I'll go to annotations and the first thing is is to have this nice colored background so I'm going to bring in the shape and um, as you can see it's here let's bring it down to fill the whole area and then when the area is full you can just set the color I'm gonna grab it off here for now all right and what we can always do is look at through the opacity layer which you're gonna see I'm gonna use this technique to see that everything makes sense that's good so that layer is done next we want to do the uh, inner rectangle which is the white shape and let's build that out and we know it's somewhere approximately around that shape and then somewhere up here and then I'll finish it up by looking kind of through here and see what we have with our opacity so I selected those two layers you can see it's not quite big enough so I'm going to click here click on the white shape and let's just stretch her the rest of the way she needs to go and is that good I think that's pretty good we play with our opacity layer on the two and see how that looks looks pretty good so see how we've now got the two layers and then the next layer is our text so you can continue going on that route then we in this case we go for uh, sorry our annotations go to text and then um, in this case I'll grab the lettering ABC put it there and this is we, we know we want black text so 
going to change that to uh, black color. Okay, and then I believe the text is open sans regular. And there you go. So now we can see that we've kind of done three of the layers, right? We got the background, we got the white square and the text. So I go through this process to continue mimicking what's underlying. So I'm just going to delete these and show you, slide these in because I've basically brought all of them in. It's a simple exercise to do as I've shown you. Just do it step by step. And, you know, again, if I select all above the bottom layer, which is my video, we can sort of get that opacity blend and see that everything kind of lines up reasonably. And you're not bound by what you have in the original. Use your creativity. There's just one more little adjustment to make this consistent with the original um, quote video that we have, and that is to change the image to be black and white instead of color. Of course, you could leave it color, but if you wanted to make it black and white, grab the color adjustment. Uh, visual effect and then you want to adjust the numbers in the uh, color adjustment to be I've already played with this eight and then we want it for brightness and then we want 15 for contrast and minus 100 so you see how that looks nice and um, you know that's as a result of tuning because if you know if you got too much contrast it's too whited out you know, and then too little, it's kind of got that hazy look. And the brightness I increased a little just to make things work. So let me set that back to 15. There you go. Now let's start step three and build out our video quote animations. As you can see on the bottom here, I have the templates that we put together in step one. And for convenience, I just sort of put them together in a stack here to help us to um, do our job more quickly here. And on the right side here are the elements that we put together in step two. I'm just gonna bring down our original design that we were basing things off of, and you can see and recognize that. Um, we had created our shape, which fills the backgrounds and colored it accordingly, That and we see it here. And then our first um, step that we want to do, I'm gonna pull out the base design and bring in the template piece that has the white rectangle and that's with these S1, S2 and S3s. So this rectangle is going to be aligned with our S1 here for entry and we can't see things behind so what we need to do is disable track 2 here temporarily so we can see in behind and you'll see that in if we move the cursor back to the start position that the uh, white, white square in behind is on an angle and fits here. So now we're going to finesse things here. And just to know in the replay, um, in the recording, I may do fast speed because some of the finessing may be messy. Here we go. Okay, so there's our starting position. Just off a fraction, but it's pretty close and it's not about being perfect. It's about, you know, replicating a design and reverse engineering it like we're doing. And then you can tune it to, to your liking after. Now let's go to step uh, two, position two here. And position two and position three, S2 and three, are going to require custom animations. So I'm just going to add a couple of custom animations on. And if you notice, I'm shortening their duration and pulling the end keyframe back as tight as I can make it. These are actually about just two frames in length. So let's go back to position two, which is the next one I was going to do. So we can see our position to move to there. And then um, we're going to put align the end keyframe here, just show red here. And so now we need to make this kind of look uh, a line over top of what's here. There we go. It's pretty close. And that gives us our second position. Then in our third position, you can see that the square has moved to now be in its final resting spot. So let's pull in the next keyframe with the end and have our square align with what's there. There we go. And now if we were to use our control right square plus right square bracket, we can bounce from marker to marker and see how that, that unfolds nicely. There we go. So there we've dealt with that shape, the white one. 
Now let's go to our next one. So now I'm grabbing the text. Now we have the text we're going to bring in. So we know our text is starting position. Whoops. I did a replaceable thing here, so I'm going to undo it. Gets the text back to the top. So on our T1 point for the text, we see that our text is down here, but it needs to be up there. So we're going to, on this entry or start position, put the text up there. First, I'll give it a little bit of a, the angle it needs by playing with the Z rotation. Let's line it up there. It's pretty good. Now let's go to our next position. So on the template, I double clicked on the T2 here. Now I'm going to bring in um, an animation because we have T2 and T3, so we're going to need two custom animations again. So I'm going to put one in here, bring a second one. I could also just copy it, but I just decided to drop the two on just as easy. Go back to position two where we're going to be aligning this next move. And I'm going to hide the white shape now to help us see where the text is because it's in the layer down below. It's close enough. Put it on top and that gives us our T2 and now let's go to our T3 which is in the final resting spot for the text. Let's bring in our custom animation and align the end keyframe right where we want it and bring the text down there, that looks pretty good. And just see how it's going to look on the white background. We can just bring it back in and check. So that's good. We got that, that layer done now. Let's go get the next one. So you got the idea. I went through using the templates for the rest of the elements and set up the start and animation timings using keyframes with precision. These remaining elements included the line, the title, the picture, and the author information. Today we looked at creating an animated video quote in Camtasia for posting on social media. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to show some more creative animation video effects like I shared today that you can use for creating social media video posts. If you need any assistance with your YouTube content strategy or help with video editing or your Camtasia projects, be sure to reach out to me through Messenger or my website gordeisman.com and let's have a chat. See you in another video soon.